Oh, Jesus. It's not even that early. I'm still half asleep. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're just going to do another probably really long chatty get ready with me. I have a couple of products here that I really want to play with. I also have some new things, but I think I'm going to wait to use those for when I can dedicate like a full video to them. really want to use the ColourPop foundation. I've been testing that out for a couple of days, and I've been testing it out with the concealer and with the powder, the loose powder from ColourPop. Today I want to use just the foundation with the rest of like my favorite products, just to see how it works with those. And I really want to dig in due to the controversy with the new palettes. I really want to dig into the old Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette. And I think once we get to this point, I really want to do like um, like a palette roulette. And just pick, I randomly pick four colors from here just to kind of shake it up a little bit. Because I've kind of been going for the same look whenever I reach this palette, even though it's like gigantic. So before we jump into the video, grab a snack. It's probably going to be long. I actually have notes about what I'm going to talk about today, so we have quite a bit to go over. Also, before we start, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like Chatty Get Ready With Me's. And let me know down below if you guys like this. In my last video and in some other videos, I've had people say that they love these longer, just like, videos of me talking. And I really appreciate that, and if you guys like it, I'll definitely do more videos like this. <laughs> so first things first. I got a haircut. So I actually went and got my very first diva cut. If you don't know what that is, it's a haircut that's done on dry hair that is specifically for curly hair. I've never in my life, in my 25 years, ever gotten my hair cut curly. I've always like blow dried, straightened it out. I've been blow drying and straightening my hair since I was like 12 or 13. So this is the first year I'm actually trying to keep it curly. And I really like how the haircut came out. I don't want to get too in-depth about it because I am going to do a whole video on my first diva cut. I have the before and after pictures which look kind of insane. <laughs> but overall, it's a lot shorter than I thought it would be. But I think also that's because of how they styled it. I think when I style it, it'll be a little bit longer. But... Ah, I just really like how it came out. I actually just got back from the salon last night. So I pineappled my hair and I slept in it and this is technically second day hair and it looks beautiful. So I'm going to just throw a headband on real quick. I don't really want to like clip hair back because I did that once and I had like one curl that was like sticking up right here and it wouldn't go back down. <sighs> okay. So, let's go ahead and get primed and get our foundation started. So today I'm going to jump in with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I've been testing the ColourPop foundation with a few primers so far, but I haven't tried it with this one, so I do want to see how they react. My ColourPop video, I know it's taking a little bit to come out, but I am actually doing like a full in-depth review of all the base products. So it's going to take a little bit of time for me to test them out, not only with each other, but also, but also like individually, because I do want to see like how does the loose powder work with other concealers? How does the pressed powder work with other foundations? How does the foundation work with a bunch of other products? So I am testing it out thoroughly and the video is probably gonna be a long video, but I'm excited to do a full review as opposed to doing a first impression and just throwing up a video for the sake of throwing up a video. I found that my favorite way to apply the ColourPop foundation is with a sponge. So today I'm going to be using the NYX sponge that I have right here. I've already dampened it. I've picked up two shades of the ColourPop foundation and neither one of them is like a perfect match, so I've been mixing them. So I have shade Light 60 and shade Light 55, so I'm just going to mix those two together. And then today for my concealer, I'm going to use the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. Normally for under my eyes, I do C6, but we're going to see if C6 or C5 looks better with this foundation. So while I start mixing and putting my foundation on, let's go ahead and jump into some life updates. Originally today was going to be a like get ready with me for my Sephora job, but we actually have a big storm coming and the it's not a store that's in a mall. The Sephora is on like a regular street and so weather heavily affects traffic in the store. 
and because there's this huge storm coming they rearranged the whole schedule and said basically no one's going to come in today we only need like the bare bones staff so my schedule got rescheduled or my schedule my shift got rescheduled for next saturday so i actually have today off which i'm not complaining about i had a long week so i think my boyfriend and i are gonna go see the new incredibles movie tonight and then probably get something to eat i don't know he has to work tomorrow so normally we try not to stay out late on saturdays Ooh, i didn't mix that well at all that looks dark so normally we don't stay out too late on saturdays if we do go out and do something like go out drinking we try to go friday night because normally my sephora shifts don't start till the afternoon and he's off saturday so that way we can kind of not worry about having to wake up early why does this look so much different did i not mix this right i don't know what is going on okay we're gonna go with it <laughs> Either I'm having a stroke or this didn't mix as well as it did yesterday. Yes, yeah, so the Sephora job is going great right now. It's only been a couple of weekends, but I'm enjoying it. My main job has been keeping me really busy, but I'm finally kind of starting to get in the swing of things. It's just a little hard though because I came in at a really strange part in, or at a really strange time, for the company where basically all of their IT systems, they changed literally everything the day I started. So a whole lot of operations are kind of on hold and there's just a lot of stuff that either we can't do for the time being until everything is in place and ready to go or nobody really knows how to do yet because it's a brand new system. It's nice because I'm not the only one who like doesn't know anything. <laughs> so. But the flip side of that is nobody really knows what's going on and we all kind of just have to learn together. But it's been nice because I basically have been training myself, I've been getting trained by supervisors, and for the most part my day is fairly self-structured. Oh, I don't... Ugh. The one thing I really don't like about this foundation is how it looks around my nose. It looks really bad around my nose. But overall, I'm really enjoying the pace. It's a very self-guided position um, where I don't really have anyone over my shoulder telling me what to do, telling me what I need to get done. Essentially, I'm handed projects, I'm handed training, I'm handed other stuff and said, like, here you go. You decide what priority you do things in, just have all your information and know what needs to get done. And I really, really like that. I also really, really like not having to work retail anymore. Ugh. And if anyone's worked retail before, I applaud you because it's not easy and most people suck. I'm just really glad that I don't have to deal with that anymore because I saw this one tweet a few weeks ago and it was from this, I forgot, let me see if I can find it, I'll throw the picture up. But she basically said, um, my life got so much more calm and so much easier when I stopped working retail. And it's 100% true. Like, at my old job, I'd always be stressed. You would always be, like, on guard because you had no idea what would happen. Like, I worked at a bookstore, but my desk was in the middle of the store. So, like, my desk, it was book information. So you were right at the desk, and then behind you were all the books. So you were just, like, kind of the first line of defense. Uh, so if anyone had any problems, if anyone couldn't find anything, and you think, oh, it's a bookstore, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I worked with textbooks, so they were expensive. I was working with professors, professors who would change books and not tell us, people who bought the book and then the professor says you don't need it and so they would yell at us they would want a refund even though they lost their receipt and they have no proof that they bought it. All of that would hit us first. And so you're just constantly on guard waiting for like the next crazy thing to happen. Okay, the shade doesn't look too bad. It's a little off, but it doesn't look terrible. And with this job, I don't have to do that. I don't have my own office, it's like a half cubicle. It's an open plan office kind of thing, so I have like a desk kind of like my vanity and then I have little walls that go up about this high. So I kind of have like walls to put stuff on, I have my computer, but then I'm also sitting right next to with someone and then we kind of have like a pod of desks. And then next to me in the next pod are a couple of other people in my team, but they're not like my direct supervisors. So overall, it's a really nice setup and I like how, I like how much freedom there is to like schedule your day. As long as you're getting your work done, like they really don't give a shit what you do. 
But I just remember thinking like back when I was at the bookstore, I was like, I would just kill to have my own office. I would kill to have my own desk where I could just kind of tune out and get work done. Cause that's all I really want to do. I want to do work. I want to be busy. And at the end of the day, I want to be happy with what I've done. And I finally got to that point. I was able to Friday, like spend the day at my desk. I had headphones in, I was listening to music. I was getting my work done. And then at the end of the day, I could just leave and leave work there. That sounds simple enough, but sometimes you really just have to take a moment to acknowledge that you've reached something that at one point in life you really, really wanted. And just to take a second to appreciate it because I remember being in that place where it was like, I can't deal, with, especially as an introvert, I can't deal with these people all day. I can't constantly be bombarded with all this stuff without it taking like a toll on me like emotionally and like stressfully if that's a word but now i'm in a place where that's better and i'm just really really happy and thankful for that so this past week was my first week back after my business trip so i was flown out by my company to columbus ohio where that's actually where like my reporting boss is stationed so she's in columbus and i'm in the jersey office overall it was a really busy trip i thought i would have a little bit of time to kind of go around and do some stuff but by the end of each day like we did so much that i was exhausted like i grabbed a beer and went to bed pretty much but it was really nice to be able to work in person with my supervisors because most of my supervisors are remote like there's one in Indiana, there's one in Florida. So we were all able to actually come together and do most of my training. So it was really, really nice. I'm definitely getting used to being the baby of the office. Cause back at the bookstore, I was one of the oldest people that worked there because most people were college students and we weren't, or me and my other coworkers that were the same age weren't in college anymore. Now I'm the only, I'm pretty sure I'm the only person under 30 in the whole office, in the Jersey office. Cause I did meet a couple of girls in Columbus that had like my same title, but they worked in different departments and they're kind of close to my age. But in like the office that I'm working at right now, I'm definitely the youngest. <laughs> and it's not a bad thing. For under my eyes today, I'm gonna try using the Rimmel Stay Matte Loose Powder just to see how it works with this foundation and concealer. The only bad part about my trip was that the flight on the way back got delayed which ended up working in my favor because i had to stay at the office and work until right before my flight so i brought my suitcase to the office we worked all day and then at around four my flight was at 5 30 and the airport was only like 20 30 minutes away so my boss was like you know you really don't have to go until four so we're gonna work until four and then you can go so i call the uber we get on Unfortunately, it's like rush hour on the highway and there was a really, not even a really bad car accident. There was just a car accident with four cars. We ended up passing it after a while, but nobody was hurt. Everyone was walking around, but it was just like a four car fender bender all together. And so I guess everyone was rubbernecking at it. But because of that, we were in traffic for nearly 45 minutes. So I was so close to missing my flight that I was freaking out about it, so. We finally get to the airport, I jump out, check in, and they said, oh yeah, so your flight's delayed by two and a half hours. And I'm like, on the first hand, thank God, so I don't miss it, but on the other hand, I'm stuck here for two and a half hours. Uh, for the rest of my face, I'm just lightly going in with my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. But it wasn't too bad. They have a lot of really nice restaurants there, surprisingly. They had like a Wolfgang Puck, like literally like across the hall from my gate. So like my gate was right here and the Wolfgang Puck was right here. So I took a seat at the bar, had some snacks, grabbed a drink, and just kind of kept myself busy until the flight finally left. I was the last person on the plane because I looked at the seating plan and my seat was the very last row in the back of the plane and it was an aisle seat. So I was like, I'm just gonna go in last cause that's gonna be a pain in the butt. And I honestly, I hate aisle seats. I would 1 million percent prefer a window. So I was the last person on the plane. It was a really tiny little plane, but 
the flight back wasn't bad it was just having to wait a little bit longer for it and then i got home around 10 and then so i got home around 10 and then i had to go into the office the next morning because we had this emergency about this conference and i had to do something in the office the next day so i was a little bit exhausted the next day last friday but thankfully i only had to do a half a day so i was out of there by like one for bronzer today i'm going to be using the milani baked bronzer in 09 dulce i have been loving this bronzer it's one of the most like natural looking bronzers so it doesn't show up too much on camera but it just blends out and it looks just like you have a nice tan on it doesn't look like i put on like bronzer so i've been going or i've been reaching for this ever since i've gotten it and it's just the best like everyday subtle just warm up your face kind of shade you can kind of see it on camera but it just looks like a natural like bronze <laughs> what i did want to talk about next was my commute because i've actually everyone that i talked to was like oh you have such a long commute it's an hour long and you have to take three trains but honestly, I've actually really been enjoying it. For my contour, I'm gonna take the Smashbox Contour Palette and just take the Ashy Contour Shade right here. And I just take this on my NARS Eda brush and just kind of like that, just a little bit. And then I'll blend it out. So yeah, like I said, it's an hour long commute and it, three trains does sound like a lot, but it's really not bad. And like I said, the longest train is that second one. And as long as I can actually get on the train, because sometimes it's so busy in the morning that it's hard to catch it. <laughs> but as long as I get on that train, it's fine. And I bring a book with me, and I have my AirPods in. I keep my phone in my backpack, but I have my AirPods in, have some like ambient music playing, and I get lost in my book. I've actually, since I've started working, I finished four books that I've had in my pile. I've had, can we see it here? I've had a gigantic pile of books to get read, not even to mention the other pile I have on my bedside table. And I have another pile over there. So I'm working my way through my book pile and I'm actually really liking it. So when everyone's like, oh, your commute is so long. Oh, you have to stand up on the train. Oh, you have to do this. Basically, I just get structured time every day to read books, which I'm seriously loving it. So staying on the Milani train, I'm going to take the Baked Blush in Luminoso for today. Feeling a little glowy. I'm really loving the Milani Baked Formula. If you haven't tried a Baked Blush or a Baked Bronzer, b -b -baked, or a Baked Bronzer, definitely try them out. They're really affordable and awesome. And my highlighter today is going to be the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Royal Glow. So next real quick i'm just going to do my brows and then prime my eyes and we'll come back and do the palette roulette with the jaclyn hill palette okay so i'm gonna try to do just a quick look with this palette so i'm gonna do a random number search to find i'm gonna do f three let's start with three i could always bring in more shades if i want but let's do three shades i'm just numbering them one through seven and then the next row and so on until 35. So I'm going to set random.org to pick between 1 and 35. So our first shade is shade 30. So that is... Ooh, so we got a color. We have this teal right down here. That's pretty. So this shade is called Jada. So let's go ahead and... Shloop. So that is our first shade. Let's do the next shade is... 18. 18 is the shade right here. It's one, two, three, one. This is the shade Roxanne. That I have to like hate that like I have to like compare the shade names, but we got it. So this is the shade Roxanne. Looks very earth tony. I'm liking it. Liking it. So let's do one more shade. And the last shade is number 24. Okay, so we got a shimmer. Thank God. So we've got this shimmer right here. This is the shade Hustle. So let's see how this looks. Oh, sorry, that was my stomach. So let's see how these look. Huh. Okay. Think I can work with this, thinking about it. Just a little close up for you guys on the three shades that we got picked. 
Okay, so I really don't want to do just the like cop out like color on the lower lash line. I'm gonna see what I can do here. I think I'm gonna go in with Jada first and just start using that as my transition. Really, I don't have a whole plan right now. I don't even have like a half plan. I'm just kind of gonna throw some colors on my face and see what happens. Okay, so I think I want to do a halo eye and inverse the pop of color and maybe just do the brown shade on the lower lash line. So I'm going to bring Jada all the way in to my inner corner and just kind of build it up there as well and just leave the middle clean. Ooh, look at that. I don't know if I want to carve it out with concealer or just go in with glitter glue. Hmm. You know, I'm gonna keep it simple. Let's just go in with my NYX glitter glue and I'll just put this all over the lid and then jump in with our shimmer shade for today, which I already forgot the name of, which is Hustle. I got it, Hustle. Oh, those actually look really cute together. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna do my best to try, <laughs> try being the key operator and use our brown shade. I also forgot the name of this. I'm not good at this. I'm really not. Roxanne. I'm gonna try and take Roxanne to line my upper lash line and then use it to smudge out the lower lash line. We'll see if this, this works. I'm gonna need a close up mirror. Oh my god, I actually really like how that turned out. So I just used it to line and then I like winged it out. So I'm acting like that's my winged liner and it, oh my god, that looks, whoa. Let's see if I can do that on the other side. Okay, it didn't turn out as nice on that side, but it's there. <laughs> so since I used Roxanne for my liner, I'm just going to throw on a little bit of mascara and pick a lipstick. Whew, can I just say I am like mad impressed with how nice this look turned out? Wasn't expecting a whole lot to be honest, so I don't know if I want to go with a nude lipstick or like a crazy colorful one So I do have the Jeffree Star liquid lipstick equality bundle right here and I really want to try The little blue shade it kind of matches. It's called breakfast at Tiffany's. So we're gonna try it So it doesn't match but I'm not mad. It kind of fits. <laughs> oh, very out there look. Definitely one that I wouldn't have put together on my own, but it's different. <laughs> I kind of look like I have hypothermia. Is it cute hypothermia though? Okay, so we're gonna stop there before I get any stupider. So thank you so much for watching. Hope if you guys liked it, you'll give this video a thumbs up. And let me know down below if you wanna see any more Chatty Get Ready With Me's and if you do what you want me to talk about during them. I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye.